So what is a good friend to you? When people are nice and they be nice to other people and they're a good friend. And Vaughn, what is a good friend to you? I think a great friend is to me. I think that is um, a good friend to be with, and uh, just uh, you keep secrets with them, and uh, you can have good times with them. That's why I think a good friend is to me. Hello, my name is London Thornton, and this 
this is what I think a good friend to me is. A good friend is someone you can rely on. And when you have nobody else to talk to, you can go and talk to your friend. Good friend to you. A good friend is when you're feeling down, they help you get back up. I think what's a good friend is like that doesn't that that cares for you and like that that, that never does stuff to get you in trouble and that's it. A good friend is someone who like has your back and never betrays you and if one of your friends if one of your friends says like hey if you don't do this or if you don't do that i'm not going to be a friend anymore that's not a good friend a good friend is basically someone who cares for you and will never let you get in trouble and never tell you things to do that will get you in trouble and that's what i think a good friend is a friend be nice to you and a good friend play with you and they help you when you're injured. A good friend is kind, helps others, and shares. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. So when you have true fellowship with other believers, he said a friend loves at all times, where I'm loving you at all times because I, I, I'm loving you like Christ loves me. So it doesn't stop. There's no... Um, there's no period where it's not a rest period, <laughs> but it's ongoing. I love you at all times when I feel like it and when I don't feel like it. Amen. He says, and a brother is born for his adversity. We thank God for those people that when we go through the highs and lows of life, we have people in our lives that God has put in our lives to help us uh, weather those storms. You, you know, as friends, we wish we could fix everything, but sometimes just being there. Sometimes we just have to be there for one another. I thank God for the men and people that God has put in my life. When I, I went, you know, through adversity in my life, there's things that I brought on my, my on myself and there's things that just life just happened. But God always would have somebody there because, yeah, we, we have our relationship with God. We do, but God uses people. He uses people to love us through as well, and that we love on we we love him. He said, "How can you um, basically say you love me and you don't love the you hate the person that hate the people around you? So you can't love God without loving people. It doesn't work." Um, and so speaking about a brother born in a, for adversity, and I'm I'm almost done. First um, Samuel twenty forty one, and and I'm gonna ask you to read uh, this whole chapter. I'm not gonna be able to go through this whole chapter, but it's a lot of good things in it. But this again is taking place with David and um, Jonathan. So at this point, um, Saul Saul is like acting a little shady. He's threatening to kill David. The jealousy that he had for David is now, before he was able to control it, now it's just like he's trying to kill him. And so David, at this point, <clears throat> he he knows that Saul is out to get him. And so, again, remember, Jonathan is the, the king's son. And so let's see how deep this loyalty goes. He said, as soon, uh, verse 41, he says, as soon as the lad had gone, David rose from the place towards the south, fell on his face to the ground, bowed three times, and they kissed one another, and it's not sexual kiss, it's a greeting. He said they wept together, but David more so. Then Jonathan said to David, go in peace, since we have both swore in the name of the Lord. Remember, they made a covenant with God. 
with each other and with God saying, may the Lord be between you and me and between your descendants, your kids and my kids, my descendants forever. So he arose and departed and Jonathan went into the city. So in that passage, basically David was asking Jonathan is the king out to get him. They set up like a, a code. If the um, Jonathan, no, David would hide out behind the rocks. And then if, if the Saul, if King Saul was out to get David, he was going to shoot the arrow far. And then the signal, he was going to have the, the lad, I guess the little kid that would help him get his arrows back. He was like, go beyond, you know, the, the arrows behind you. So that was the code to let David know, okay, it's time to run because my dad is out to get you. Because they're in covenant, it went deeper than Jonathan's relationship with his dad. He Jonathan knew his dad was in the wrong. So because he loved David as his own, as himself, he warned David and had him go. And they both grieved together. And then they remembered the covenant they had each with each other. So basically, you have my life, I have yours. So whatever is mine is yours and whatever is yours is mine. Your I treat my kids the same way I would treat yours. Okay, so... You, you'll get, it get a little more meat to that if you go back and read it. And But I want to skip ahead. And this is going to be years later after Jonathan and David, um, and Jonathan and Saul gets killed. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9. Um, I'm going to skip around with this. So this is years later. Jonathan is dead. Saul is dead. David has now become king of Israel. And as they're sitting down, uh, 2 Samuel 9, chapter 9, verse 1. Now David said, is there still anyone who is left in the house of Saul that I might show kindness for who? Jonathan's sake. Jonathan is no longer around, but he remembers that he has a covenant with Jonathan. Jonathan is dead, but they have exchanged life. So whoever is alive in Jonathan's bloodline is basically belongs to David. And so um, I heard someone say that David probably looked at his arm and remembered the covenant that he had or his hand, the covenant that he had with uh, Jonathan. And so now he's thinking, it's like, and he reminded of the covenant that they had with each other years before. And so I'm, I'm going to skip a little bit. So basically, they go out, they go find um, the guy's name is Mephibosheth. Oh, I know I'm just kind of spitting all over the camera. Um, and so they find him and he's, he's you know, basically they when he was five, they were running when they, uh, Jonathan and Saul died. They uh, His nurse took him left. She tripped and he ended up being lame. And so at five, and now he's older, and he's he's basically lame at this point. So he brings David brings um, Mephibosheth back to the palace, and then it says this. Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, this is verse six, had come to David, he fell on his face, prostrated himself, then said, "David, Mephibosheth," and he answered, "Here is your servant." So David said to him, do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan's, your father's sake. And then he said, I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table. In verse eight, then he bowed himself and said, what is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? And then the king said to uh, Seba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and to all his house. You therefore, your sons and your servants shall work the land for them, for him. And you shall bring in the harvest that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table always. Now Ziba and the 15 sons and 20, 20 servants. The point is, because of the relationship that David had with Jonathan, it impacted um, Jonathan's kids because when Jonathan is off the scene, 
David remembers his covenant. He brings Jonathan's son at his table where only the, the king's men and the king's family is supposed to eat. But Mephibosheth is basically the king's son because he exchanged life and made a covenant with Jonathan. So everything that belonged to Jonathan belongs to David. So now David has a son and his name is Mephibosheth. So although he was living in poverty and all that, he's now sitting at the king's table. But Mephibosheth was like, I don't deserve to be here. I'm a dead dog. All that. It was like, he didn't even address it. It has nothing to do with you, Mephibosheth. It's because of the covenant I have with your father. Thank you, Jesus. That's a deep love. To where not only I love you and give my life for you, but I'm giving and I'm going to take care of your kids just like I will want somebody to take care of mine. This is the type of mindset God wants his people to have in these days to where it's not about just me and mine, but it's about us. Oh, yeah, my kids are succeeding. Yeah, well, you know, and and your, the, 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 your neighbor's kid don't even have a backpack. But if we are to love one another as ourselves and love one another like Christ loved us, I'm going to make sure you have what you need in order for you to succeed as well. This is the mindset. This is what true fellowship looks like. It's when I exchange lives with uh, our lives together. But I think about this as I'm closing and I'm uh, a little more, uh, I went longer than I wanted to and I'm sorry. But I think about this. <laughs> That Jesus is our covenant head. You and I could never have made a covenant with God on our own. So God put himself in a human body, became 100% God, 100% man, made a covenant with himself. So that because of what Jesus did, because of his righteousness, because of what he did on the cross, because of him, him giving his life for me, as I believe and accept what Jesus did, I receive the benefits, although it has nothing to do with me like Mephibosheth, but he did it because of Jesus. I'm saved because of what Jesus did. Now I just put my faith in him and I receive just like Mephibosheth. Yeah, we're dead dogs. We don't deserve nothing. But we thank God because Jesus, who who is the perfect lamb, and he's also the perfect high priest, he paid it all for me. Now I'll place my faith in him. Thank you, Jesus. And just like Mephibosheth, okay, I, I'll lose the war about deserving it or uh, de if I'm deserving or not, because I would never be deserving of it. But it's because of the blood of Jesus, because of what Jesus did. Hallelujah. And I thank God. I thank God for what he did. You and I can never have um, became righteous, holy, sanctified, just had he received our eternal life on our own. Jesus got it for us. Now we place our faith in him. He says, uh, Ephesians 2, uh, 1, he said, you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in whom you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all once, all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature children of wrath, wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us together and sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show forth the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him, in them. 
So again, just thinking about the, this covenant relationship. Thank God for the people that he has placed in your life that can go through storms, go through life, share life with you as we go through even this next phase and in, 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 into this next season that we're going in in the world that we're living in. We need to have godly relationships in our lives. We need to have men and women who not only will love us, but all love us and keeping us accountable, that will pray for us, mourn with us, uh, celebrate with us. And so if you don't feel you have somebody like that, ask God to show you. But continue to spend and let God be your, God is always your father. You always talk to him all the time, but he would give you people. You just have to ask and you have to look and make sure you're being that type of friend to them. Don't be a, a one-sided friend where you're just receiving. But we want to um, we want to receive, but we also want to be that type of friend to other people. Amen. I don't want to be that type of friend that leaves you in ruin, but be that friend that's closer than a brother. And then again, um, for those of you who may not know Jesus, just like the position you and I and on our own strength can never, ever do whatever we could be as perfect as we think, but we can never, it's like an ant trying to become a human. We will never arrive to the point where we can deserve the goodness and grace, uh, the grace and love of God. We just receive it through Christ Jesus by accepting him, by receiving him. Um, so we can be in his family. And so if that's you and you have never received Jesus, I want you to put it in the comment message us, uh, email us, because we really definitely want to um, counsel you, talk to you, baptize you, get you on your uh, way to being a follower of Jesus. Because honestly, family, there's no other hope but in Jesus. So um, I want to pray for you. Father, I just thank you and I praise you for those who are watching. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you uh, spoke and uh, illuminated whatever you needed to do. Um, but I just pray for those who are watching, those who will watch later, that you will open up the eyes of their understanding, that they will know you, that they will know your love for them, that they will be so um, impressed by you, that they would get to the point of being so aware of you that they fall in love with you all over again. And I pray this prayer for myself. Help us to stand in all of you. Help us not to um, disrespect anything that you have or anybody and help us, Lord God, to receive those type of fellow, the type of fellowship that you're calling us into and help us to be the friends and be the brothers, be the husband, be the wife, be the cohort, be the people that we need to be to those that you have put in our lives. And God, we give you praise and we give you glory because the victory and the glory is all in you. And we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. We're praying for you. And you